Okay. Well, with our digital asset created, I thought we'd get into some fun stuff before we go in and started fixing some of the problems uh, with the geometry creation. So with that, let's just right click on this and go to uh, Type Properties. Top Properties is going to bring up the editing interface for your digital asset. And what we want here right now is the parameters. But you can see that the editor here uh, for uh, Houdini Digital Assets has a lot of different choices. I mean, you've got uh, you know, the, 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 all these different things that you can change. Uh, you can add in your help so that you can write in help files. Uh, you can put you can put in code and add scripts and add in other tools to you know. To, it, it's just it's a it's a very you can if you you can name the inputs if you want them. You can add in extra files, for instance, if you wanted to add in like a UV grid map a texture map into that that would always be embedded with the OTL. Uh, it would be embedded there. So, but what we're going to really want to mess around with right now is here with the parameters, right? Now, you can really in a lot of cases just grab parameters from other parameters sometimes and sometimes you can define them in a variety of ways right so the one thing that I know that we're going to immediately want to control is we're going to want to control the width and the height so let's just do that and let's do that with a float so we're going to add two floats we're going to add this one in first and we're going to call this one we're going to call this one uh, width Let's actually call this psych width and psych width. Actually, we can just call this width. And you can see that that, that will, it will always need the underscore. If you put in a uh, space, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll add it. OK, so let's add in another float. And let's set, actually, but let's quickly set um, the defaults here. And the defaults under the channels and let's set the default of one. OK. Now let's come back and let's add in another float and let's call that one psych height and height. And let's also give that one a default of one. OK. Great. Let's hit accept. OK. So now immediately you can see that in our interface we're, we're given our, our, our floats. And a float, for those that don't know, is just a decimal number. No, no big deal. You should all know that. And you can see that we can slide it around, blah, 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 and fantastic, and everything is perfect. So let's just set that back to 1. Right now they're not controlling anything. So the first one, let's control. Let's do the width. So let's just, with that selected, let's just go copy parameter. Let's dive back down in there not disconnect anything there and we know that the horizontal line width is the distance here so let's just paste copied relative reference and you can see that it's already taken effect so let's dive back up to the top level and let's select the height one and let's go copy parameter let's dive back down in there okay let's go to the vertical line, okay, and in that distance parameter, let's go paste copied relative reference. And it was already set to one, so you didn't see any change. But now, if you come back, you can see that we can control our psych with our interface, and that's just super cool because this just opens up a world of possibilities of what you can do with Houdini. So. Uh, with that said, now that we've got some control over it uh, with our interface, let's just save. And we're going to dive back down there and kind of start beginning to look at some of the geometry problems of what we've got going on and how we can begin to also kind of control our geometry a little bit better. So let's come back here and let's maximize this viewport because we're not going to need to look at that for a few minutes. Okay, I mean, we'll kind of go back and forth, but sometimes it's just easier. So. What we've done here is we've converted our lines to NURBS, we've joined them, and we've made a shape. And we've got that shape that's going in through our switch node. And if we come back here and look at just this, turn off our display flags completely so we can just look at the curve, we can see that we have basically a NURBS curve. And NURBS are great for a lot of different things. 
uh, and and for what we want and for initially setting us in the right direction that is what we want okay but after that join what I'm gonna come here is I'm gonna hit tab and I'm gonna hit resample okay and I'm gonna resample this curve so that I can get a lot of points with even distribution okay then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to hit refine. Okay. And I'm going to pipe that resample through refine. Okay. And down here in the refine, what I've done is I've set it to the first U uh, and the full length of the curve. You can define areas that you want to uh, refine. Uh, you can see that red dot that's moving. Uh, we'll define areas that you want to refine. We want to refine the whole, well, we want to unrefine. So we're going to click on unrefine. And you can see that what it's done is just basically interpolated through the curve and found where it needed to put density and it's put them on to. Uh, uh, just the bevel but we're still getting some problems here and the problems are really coming I believe from uh, this NURBS count uh, so after the resample what we're going to do is we're going to do a convert again and we're going to convert that NURBS curve into a polygonal curve and then we're going to come back and you can see that we can change the tolerance and get back to a curve that's much more controlled that we can we'll also be able to make and add those into the interface and we're going to pipe those now back through into our null so that now if we make our revolve we can see that the revolve is now doing a few things. One, we're getting polygons. And two, if I come back here to my refine, you can see now that the surface of our geometry is correctly following our shape, which that's what we want, right? Because we don't want to set up all of our parameters and have it be not interpolated correctly through the holes, right? So now we fix those problems so for instance now when we actually do create these numbers the width especially is going to be following the direct relationship to our curve where it was not doing that before okay you can see okay so now let's just look at this revolve really quickly you can see that we have all these uh, different choices that are going on and one of them is detail we're definitely going to want to be able to control that right so uh, let's come back up to the digital asset. Okay. We can right click on here and under open up our type properties again. Let's come back up to parameters. And this time, I think that what we're going to want to add is an integer. And an integer is just basically a number like one, two. We're going to set the default to one. Okay. And uh, we're going to come back up here and we're going to call, oh, actually, let's set the default on this one, sorry, rather. Let's set the default to 8 for the minimum amount of revolutions. And we're going to call this, um, for now, revolve, revolve divisions. I'm just going to copy and paste that. And uh, we could set a range if we wanted to. Uh, like, for instance, if, you know, for right now, maybe we'll come back and we'll change this. But let's say that we're going to have a minimum division of four and a maximum division of 100. Okay. And we're going to hit accept. Okay. Now, we don't see anything happening because our digital asset isn't even uh, uh, visible right now. I mean, our the actual final output geometry. So under Revolve Divisions, let's just copy that number right now. And you can see it's set to the default of uh, 8. So let's just go Copy Parameter, come back down here. 
let's make sure that we have our final node here selected, the revolve. And under the revolve divisions, let's just paste copied relative reference. Let's save. Okay, so now let's dive back up and you can see that now we've created control for the number of equal divisions of defining our the, the, the resolution of our geometry. So you could, we're beginning to get a useful tool here, you know, I mean, uh, it's, 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 uh, the, 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 the flexibility and the power of it is pretty awesome. Okay, so we're going to do, want to do one last thing for this lesson really quick and we're going to come back up over here and we're going to go again back to our type properties and this time we're going to add in an ordered menu. Okay, so you can see it's right down there. I'm just going to click it over. Now, we're going to expand upon this uh, ordered menu uh, 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 as we uh, progress, but right now we're just going to, we're going to only do the two things that we have. We're going to call this parameter psych type, and then we're going to call it psych type down here as well. Okay, and we're going to come on over here to uh, uh, the menu options and you can see that we have, uh, I'm sorry, we're going to come, yeah, we're going to come on over here to these menu options. We're going to go use menu and we're going to turn that on so that we can, we're going to have a, a, a drop down normal menu and we're going to define it and we're going to say zero is equal to uh, radius. Okay. radius and we're going to say one is custom okay and we're going to go apply okay accept so now we're going to right click on that and copy parameter and we're going to come down and we're going to maximize the viewport right so I'm going to expand that. I'm going to come down here and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a switch node. Okay, so I've created this switch node. I'm going to grab both of those, drop them in there, and you can see that they both dropped in there. And now I'm going to select our switch node and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here, I'm going to add in a null, I'm going to call it psych out. <laughs> Get that? Psych out. That's cool. And uh, I'm going to pipe that through to that's the last node in our chain there. So with that node selected, everything will always be visible because uh, as we build the system, everything will go above that. With this sweet node select, this switch node selected, I'm going to hit the P key. And under select input, I'm going to go paste copied relative reference. If you're uh, down and you've got the node view maximized, you can just always hit the P key to bring up that parameter editor because sometimes it's easier to work like this than it is to even look at stuff. So there we go. So what we've done now is we've added in that final switch node right there. Uh, this is going to be eventually the backbone of the final version of our, our, our digital asset for defining what kind of psych we're going to use. So let's just come back out, see if it's working. And right now we've set it to radius. Let's just set it to custom. And obviously it's making a horrible shape, but that is our shape. That is what we want. So uh, we can set it to radius. We can set it to custom, right? And uh, then I'm going to add in one more little thing real quick. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to go to type properties. Okay. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add in a toggle. Okay. Boom. Add in a toggle. And I'm going to say, call this bevel toggle and bevel. Okay, and I'm going to hit apply and accept. So now I'm going to come over here to this and I'm going to right click and I'm going to go copy parameter and I'm going to dive back down into our psych tool. I'm going to maximize it again so we can see what's going on. And back over here at this switch, okay, I'm going to paste copied relative reference.